Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Road to Rank 1. Today our first opponent is a Protoss player. And we're playing on a map in which one gate expands are the norm. But we're going against the norm today. As we will play a double gate opener here. We won't scout early on, so we can't block our opponent's natural. And I actually want to start with a very fast proxied gateway. This is a build order that has been played a little bit more recently. A lot of people have been starting to two-gate a bunch. And I don't want to say that I don't know how to beat it. I've just been struggling to beat it. And often a good way to figure out how to beat something is by playing it yourself and then either win or uh, well, you gain the information on how to beat that specific build order. This is the beauty of Protoss versus Protoss, is that if you really struggle with something, you can just copy that exact style or that exact, o exact opener and then figure out what the actual counter to it is. Now, my opponent hasn't scouted me yet, so I'm beginning to believe that he might actually be doing a very similar thing here. That would make me a little bit upset. So, no scout out of my opponent yet. I said I was going to start with a uh, proxy gate, but if he doesn't have... Yeah. If he doesn't have a wall on the low ground, there's absolutely no need for that. He might also be... Hmm, interesting. Yeah, he's just playing two-gate himself. So we're going to be playing a two-gate mirror. I feel very comfortable in two-gate mirrors. It's by far my favorite setup. I think I'm quite good at it. I understand a lot of the, the nuances in the early game. So let's just open up with Adept, Adept here. I've been mining a lot of minerals, not quite as much gas. And I think that's going to help me out here. Maybe I should even try and lock him out. Okay, you completely cut worker production at this point. I'll start a Stargate as well. I don't see a third pylon yet. Might be on the low ground, might be somewhere else. Okay, no third pylon whatsoever. Somewhat suspicious, in my opinion. So we'll play Adept, Adept into Stalker, Stalker. This is a a fairly safe opener out of me, I would say. So we're just going to patrol over here in this area. And now we're going to send this in. So this worker ideally gets some info on things like tech. Uh, oh, well, I guess we're not really going to get any info whatsoever on things like tech. I'm almost tempted... ...to build a battery in my main base. Because I'm not so sure what actually is going on. Which honestly scares me a tiny tad. Okay, adapt, adapt. Uh oh. Into Stalker, Stalker as well. So, a very similar setup out of my opponent. I really am feeling a proxy Stargate here, honest to God. He finished that battery, didn't he? He definitely did finish that battery. That's beautiful for me. I'm still not so sure what his actual follow-up is going to be. Um, I think he's... Maybe I actually want him to finish this. Do I want that? I mean, why not? Would not have been too bad, right? Definitely wouldn't have been too bad if he had finished it. Oh, we can move this away. So my opponent decided to open up with what seems like a uh, a three-gate robo, basically. Well, I opened up with a slightly different opener. A more... A, ooh, okay. The prism's already here. Could be an issue. Could also just be fine. Just gonna make sure that if he ever shows up on the edge, that I'll be ready for him. Okay. There, he does show up on the edge. Now, don't forget that we can pull workers here, which is definitely going to help. Oh, well, not the greatest hits, but it is what it is. Control this on the side. So we have an expansion. Our opponent does not have an expansion. I have a battery. Our opponent does not have a battery. Do, can I turn that into a super battery? Yep. I always make sure to have plenty of energy for that. Killed one stalker for absolutely free over there. 
Yep, GG. Very clean first game, two gate versus two gate, like I said. I feel extremely comfortable in my knowledge of that matchup. And if every game could be a two gate versus two gate, I'd be a very happy man. I'm right, going to get 24 points for this. That's a pretty decent player as well, look at that. 6581, I don't actually know who this is, but the win is a win. And we'll head into our second game. Actually, exact same opponent as last game. Mm, almost tempted to try and do the same thing again, but on a map like Waterfall, it feels like the one get expand is just so powerful. On Tropical Sacrifice, I don't know. It, it feels like the, the two gate might have some actual potential. I'm not sure why, maybe more locations to hide stuff. It feels harder to scout and your initial scout also hits a little later, but on this map, I always feel like I have so much time to respond to everything if I'm playing one gate. Doesn't mean that I can't lose, it just means that it's less likely that I'm going to end up losing here. Um, gateway in the wall, just start sending it out. I also actually don't mind playing against two gate, I just really like playing against two gate. The thing that I dislike the most in PvP is playing one gate versus one gate, which you know, actually is the current meta. If everyone else would start two gating, I really would have no problem playing one gate expense. One gate expense provide uh, early stargate units. They give ooh, there we go. He's playing two gate. Um, they give just a, a lot of benefits that you don't really have with with a two gate. Uh, mainly an eco, but also when it comes to tech timing. Now, important for my opponent is going to be to figure out whether I have an expansion or not, because it is, like I said, a little more more common these days. And last game, I think it's the same opponent as last game. I also played a two get expand. He'll need to poke up the ramp to check what I'm doing. The moment he pokes up the ramp, I will just start chasing his worker with my own worker. Then I'll know that if he's going to proxy, where that proxy is going to end up being. It's also possible that because I scouted so early that he knows that I'm actually, yeah, okay. Okay, this is a, a different type of way of playing. So he's assuming right now because I scouted after my first gate. Uh, this is really cool. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. Proxy gate. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. So yeah, because he, he saw my scout timing, he assumed that I was playing one gate because I had a one gate scout timing, obviously. Uh, he has a little bit of a building over here. I'm going to uh, chrono out a stalker, I guess, and then full wall this with a robotics facility. Or should I just get a stargate? Stargate is the standard, so we'll just get the, 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 the golden standard. Tried and tested, right? Why not? You could potentially follow this up with a, uh, well, proxy something. I'm not sure what he would want to proxy here, but it could be a lot of different things. Don't really want to chase this with a worker if I don't have to. It just costs me money. Gonna get a battery on the low ground. Maybe a battery in this general direction. And I could decide to do a couple of things at this point. One, I could throw down a forge to get cannons with this. I think it's not that bad of an idea. I could also not do that though, which I also think is a fine plan. But this is a full wall, which means it's going to massively suck for him. I'll throw this one out here. Keep doing a pile on here. I'll know when he'll expand in that case. Ooh, full wall, fort gate. Okay, so my opponent is playing four gate right now. In that case, I really do want a forge. A forge is a fantastic tool to have in that case. I'm going to get another battery a little bit closer, but not too close. Still difficult for him to fight it. He's going to try and hit me from the high ground, or from the low ground, I should say. Ooh, I'm not quite in range of everything here. Kill this, kill this, kill this! There we go, beautiful stuff, Kevin the Koning. Once again, I feel really, really comfortable in this position. I He put this third gate, or the fourth gate, in vision, which is honestly quite bad for him. I should not have done that, I think. Gonna kill one of these. Oh, he just killed my cannon. Hmm. He actually killed the cannon. He didn't just force a cancel. No, he killed it, which is always a lot worse, obviously. Because now I'm gonna have way less money than I really should have. Just gonna keep this probe over here. Oh. I think I should have, but, 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 should have been a little bit more careful there, Kevin. We should have been a bit more careful there, but you weren't. So I, uh, it's really important that that thing stays alive. It was extremely important that that thing stays alive. Now I'm pretty much dead, I think. 
So, well, this is how you quickly lose a game, apparently. My, um, the one thing that is happening is that my cannons are most likely going to end up finishing up, but I won't have any units whatsoever to speak of, and thus the game has officially ended. I need to tap out. This is a little bit sloppy. Uh, poor control on the Void Race. Uh, lost me that game. Nothing else, right? I need to, at all times, keep my Void Race kind of above this area. After my second Void Race, I probably should start a robotics facility because he gets a level of damage output at that point where it's very viable for him to take out my Stargate before the third Void Race is out. This is not uncommon. I mean, I'm just floating ab above like dead space. I should be floating above buildings. Makes it difficult for him to attack. And uh, if like, eventually he's going to take out my buildings, I'm okay with that. But he needs to commit to that. And if he commits to that, I'm going to get cannons up, getting a robo at home. But I didn't do any of these things. And thus, I actually lost the game. A little bit sloppy. Mm, we'll try to actually get him again, because this is not how I wanted to end. I'm just going to go back and forth with this fellow a couple of times, I feel like. And he's searching at the same time as me. He's literally the same MMR. I think we can take away some of his uh, MMR points. At least, I hope that I can do that. Let's see. Same player? No, Baby Marine instead. Okay. Good old Baby Marine uh, <coughs> searching as well at the same time. That is... That is okay. It's allowed. I'll allow Baby Marine. You can uh, ruin my little hot streak. Or, well, I was losing, so my little cold streak, I guess. For playing against me. I've been practicing a, a multiple Oracle opener. Uh, two to three Oracles as an opener from... Uh, core before Nexus, so slightly less economical, but quick scout with your early adapts. A relatively fast Oracle as well in the early game, honestly. I noticed that you don't actually delay your Oracle timing as much as I initially thought you would by playing Core before Nexus. I never really paid too close attention, but if you pull quickly into gas, I'll show this game as well. Show and tell. Like we're back in uh, elementary school. Okay, move this around. Yeah, if you mine a lot of gas in the early game, it often feels quite okay for Protoss. You can get really quick tech out. Now, I'm just scouting for any potential proxies, which is important. I'm also going to rally one of my workers down here to spot any type of potential uh, eBay block. Of course, that's also a, a viable threat that Terrence can uh, put on you. This one's going to get rallied in as well. So this might seem like a waste, and I mean, it is a waste of money, but it gives me safety. If there's an eBay building there and I don't realize until I want to build my Nexus, I could be in major trouble. So I'm mining a lot of gas here. I'm getting a, fi uh, a fix. I'm getting a fast, um, ooh, a fast cyber core followed up by a Nexus. Now this is most likely going to be, well, it wasn't gas first and I see one gas already. So most likely it's going to be a two gas opener. That's what I'm expecting here at least. And now it depends what this is. Okay, it's going to be a Reaper for starters. Might follow up with something else, of course. Could follow this up with a, uh, a reactor or a second Reaper, or even with three Reapers. Like there's a, a, a couple of possibilities here for Terran. Who Chrono boost this out? And I always like the scout. And this is a good timing. This well, it might even be a bit too fast. Yeah, because often they first scout around. Uh, the, the, reason I, the reason I said this is a little bit too fast is because often when they play this, they don't actually SCV scout. Because SCV scouting is relatively expensive, and playing double gas also is relatively expensive. So if they don't SCV scout, they need to scout around for any potential proxy gates with their initial Reaper. And that means that your probe needs to either hide away a little bit further, or needs to just completely move back to your side of the map. And I didn't do either of these things, which meant that I ended up, well, kind of, kind of dying there, which isn't great. Honestly, it really, it really isn't great. Um, I can do two things here. I can either get a battery in my natural, which defends both my adept in front as well as my mineral line. Or I could not do that. It's also a possibility. And just uh, chrono boost my third, uh, my third adept. That's also a, a viable answer. Often, this is a mistake, I think, by him. So he's going to send in a Hellion while I'm doing this. That was really bad for him. I really thought he was going to send in a Hellion. Oh, 
loses two Reapers, kills absolutely nothing. Might have gotten confirmation on the with the scout though, on what I'm doing. Gonna send this bad boy across the map. Could even consider sending my Adepts across the map, but perhaps just not not quite yet. I wanna get a quick third base as well. I'm supply block because I'm an idiot. Nothing to do with the, the build order. This is not the uh, this is not supposed to be in here. Trust me. Au contraire. It's definitely not supposed to be in here. Oh, double cyclone. Should have used one cyclone to uh, flank me if he knew that I was playing Oracle, obviously. Would have been a way better call. So, uh, we saw, like I said, reactor marines, which is interesting. Um, the beauty of building a blind battery early on is that um, later on you'll have a battery, which is honestly quite useful, majority of the time. And I want to get a gateway here. We're just going to play a very standard and passive game now. We're up in eco by quite a bit. We can start putting stasis wards on the map. We don't necessarily need it, but we can do it. And I'm going to keep my oracles around as well. Uh, another thing I want to do is just start getting to just a couple of pylons around the map, just for safety's sake, and get two to three sentries. Now, with sentries, you always want to get them as early as possible because then they gain more energy. This is if you're planning on getting sentries in a build order, build them ASAP, basically, as long as it doesn't impede on any of your other tech. Sentries are very gas intense, but right now I get two sentries. By the time he's going to hit with a push, I'll have at least four force fields. Maybe I'll even have uh, six four fields if I'm uh, if I'm lucky. Maybe even get a third sentry here. You know what? We'll do it. I do like having some energy on these bad boys. And although sentries and stalkers usually aren't that great, like they're fine, but they're not like a, a brilliant unit composition. But oh, you see that? I saw it. That's what matters. Um, but because I have vision with my oracles, life is just going to be relatively easy. Or well, relatively easy. I'll still need, need to, to get in good positions, but... Oh, he's moving out right now. I don't think he can actually do anything here, honestly. He definitely knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made it way too obvious there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, my bad. So we see two medevacs over here. I'm just gonna kill that. If you're gonna give me one for free, I'm gonna take it as well. I wanna build a couple of these in the main base. The reason for that is because I can hold anything in the front, basically. But I don't see any reinforcements. This is a, a very important concept in this matchup. Is checking where reinforcements are going. So now I'm seeing reinforcements being added. I saw a mine move over here as well. Another thing that is somewhat important. So that means that he's looking to, to catch my oracles basically. A good way to never get your oracles caught is by always paying attention to it. It's going to be here, right? Yeah, there we go. We found it. For people that missed it, I'll just tag it. Here it is. Walk away from the, this bad boy. Just make sure that I have enough in my main base to deal with any major threats. I mean, we just have a fantastic setup right now. A good way to make sure that you know where your opponent's army is at all times is to have a couple of uh, observers on the map. And not necessarily to check specific spots, but just so you can always get the tags off on your opponent's army. That often is the most important thing. People don't realize this, but oracles are great for tracking armies all the way, and observers are great for getting like basically one shot at them. If, if that makes any sense, I don't think that makes any sense. Like you can, you can, you can peek them. You know, you can see them once with a with an observer, and then you just tag them with your oracles. That usually is my plan. Oh my god, did he spot that? I think he did spot that. Oh no! Okay, well, he tried fighting through a super battery there, which is actually never a good plan, in my opinion. Which means that I killed basically his entire army. I have this bad boy running around still as well. He's taking out a couple of my pylons. Once again, not the end of the world. 
actually feel somewhat okay with that. Get a Colossus out. Kill one of my own zealots, so I'm not supply blocked anymore. A little bit sloppy when it comes to the supply blocks today, but it's okay. It's okay. I can live with it. It's all alright. Okay, now we're gonna deal the final blow to his... Uh, Maybe we're not going to do any final blows right now. Going to send this in instead. Oh, don't. I'm, I'm not planning on doing any major warp ins, and thus, I think this is a completely reasonable way to deal with this. Like, if I want to warp in, I can keep all my zealots there. But if I don't want to do any big warp ins, then, I mean, oh, oh, did I just lose it? While I was taking care of this as well. It's kind of silly, honestly. That actually was kind of silly. Just bad. Poor play out of me. More vision on the edges of the map, I think, is important always. Don't actually have too many workers, which definitely is a mistake. He has to be proper confused right now. He's like, man, I scanned so many times and yet I'm not getting it. Okay, there's a mine over here. We can trigger that. Now I do want the warp in. GG. And he realizes it's over. Because the moment he goes in there, I'm just going to end up attacking this as his third base. And he'll lose. He, he needs to transfer the SCVs over. I mean, I already have a fourth. The game is just pretty over. This was a really clean game out of me. Didn't lose my oracles into mines. Didn't lose them to cyclones. Didn't die to a viking push. Yeah, then oracle builds are really good if you don't die. They give you a lot of uh, vision. You have relatively good eco. Like if you were to compare it to... Well, what should I say? A, a more regular build, like a, uh, a regular blink build. Like my Nexus is about as fast, but I just have so much vision, so much so much control that you don't really have with a regular blink build, right? Like usually you need a lot of observers, which is a lot of robo time. Um, you can get a bunch of sentries out. The only problem is you can't get double twilight upgrades before a push hits. So you need to completely rely on sentry stalker. This can be especially difficult if your opponent is opening with something along the lines of a... Uh, like a tank push, a two tank push with like a raven there. All you have is sentries and stalkers. They just move from here, siege up. Yeah, what are you gonna do? You're down like 20 supply and all you have is crap units. You rely too much on force fields. It can be very tricky. So yeah, there are some downsides to builds like this, but this game was uh, kind of showed off the off the, the upsides in a, in a proper way. Nice, let's uh, hop into our next game. All right, another game against the Baby Marine, this time on Waterfall. So significantly better map for Terran, as this is um, probably the best map pool, or the, well, the best map pool, it's the best map in the current map pool for Terran, I think. So we'll need to take some, what you call them, some liberties in our opener. And whenever I think of taking an advantage that doesn't belong to me, I always like to not scout. Scouting is really nice against Terran. It gives you a lot of information. Lots of Terran players like to all in you in the early game. And that's it. Like I said, it often gives you something valuable. But if they play standard or anything that doesn't involve a proxy, if you don't scout, you have a lot more money, which I prefer. I'm a huge fan of getting a lot of money really quickly. Um, so we're just going to kind of make the rounds around our main base. Uh, we might actually just pop out over here as well with our work. I mean... It's not like we're doing anything. I just went downstairs once again to check if there was an eBay block. Then I just pop out over here. I could have probably done it a bit faster and scouted a bit further, maybe this entire part. In case I see a barracks there, uh, would be great for me. Or, well, it wouldn't be because I would not be in time to cancel it, but it would at least allow me to start an, uh, a zealot, which is uh, pretty much you have to do, I think. You're absolutely forced into building a zealot in this type of scenario. Uh, we're going to probably play a similar build order here honestly i'm kind of feeling like a double oracle type of style it seems somewhat okay at least for me um now it's important to always start your warp gate if you're getting scouted that way your opponent doesn't entirely know what's kicking off i'm of course going to cancel that warp gate so i can actually get my uh my stargate going it's important as well oh, there we go this one goes over here Here comes the Reaper. Now, he scouted. Last time he didn't scout, and then he played two gas. I'm going to make an educated guess here and say that he most likely oh, is just playing a standard build order from this. I don't think... Like, most people that play two gas openers just don't SCP scout. There's some people that do. 
they are definitely there. They exist, you know. They're like a, a separate type of people. You know, you don't really notice them, but they are around. Uh, we usually refer to them as afraid of life. You know, it's the, the type of people that go outside and wear a helmet if they have to cross the road. Those are the people that SCV scout when they open up with two gas. They are out there. Yeah. Of course, Bay Marine isn't one of them. This is just a very standard type of opener. This time I'm hopefully not going to get supply block like last time around. Just making sure that I can block this general area off. That would be greatly helpful to, uh, for me. I almost want to go hunting for that Reaper, but at the same time, I really couldn't care less. No, I'm not going to do it. Let's check how many works he has. Three? Is that suspicious? No, not really, honestly. It's not really a suspicious number. Oh, could kill this. Now, I'm often not entirely sure if I should kill that type of stuff, or if I shouldn't. I'm just going to give him two hits. But because I killed him, I'm now, I think, allowed to move out with, with all of my... Uh, all of my adapts. Oh, you see that mine over there? It's kind of cute. Probably a Viking is what I'm expecting from my opponent right now. Okay, that finishes up. Should we just go up to three oracles? Accidentally chrono boosted a building that I really did not want to chrono boost. My plan here was to chrono my uh, my next oracle, honestly. So yeah, this this hasn't been going great so far. Oh, you see that? That's uh. Oh, he's probably uh, mind dropping me then, no? Or what's happening here? Something uh, weird is, is is going on because his Viking wasn't out yet. That's very odd. Very, very odd, no? Also, just going to follow us up with. I think the Forge might be pushing my luck a little bit here right now. Also, the double Stalker warping I think might be pushing my luck a little bit. I don't actually have any money for any of the incoming upgrades that I really do want. It's been something seeing you again. So good to... What did I say last game? You always want to get your sentries early. If you can. So I'm going to get one sentry right now. I think the, pl the quick plus one might just be a mistake. No? Oh, he actually has something in there. Did you just retarget? Absolute tryhard. Killed, what, two, three workers? Hey, it's not the end of the world. But that was nice. Three workers down. I mean, it's good for him, not for me. I said that's nice. Uh, pretending like I cared for uh, his well-being in this game. But I obviously much rather care for my own well-being in this game. Third Oracle also just doesn't add that much, I think. I'm not sure why I build it. It delays me uh, a great deal. And it annoys me a great deal as well. Don't think it provide me with much value I have to admit I regret building it I, I really do um, it allows for some strong counter attacks perhaps but I mean do I really care about that too much like there's just going to be turrets maybe I can pick up some of the units nah, nah I don't think so just wanna get a I'm never entirely sure what I want in this type of scenario it's like do I want uh Colossus, do I want... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Just lost one of my uh, my oracles flying into a position. Oh, I built a prism. This was supposed to be another... Oh, that's bad, actually. That was supposed to be another good guy. What do you call those? Another immortal. Immortals actually are really powerful. I now have four. Yes, you heard that correctly. I now have four sentries. Which actually is fine against this composition. Once again, I just need to be extremely careful of how I'm going to be uh, uh, dealing with any follow-up skate. Third medevac is here. So, two sentries for four force fields. Or, sorry, two marines for... Uh, for what, what did I say? Four force fields for two marines. That's what I want to say. I don't see any reinforcements coming in right now, which is obviously pissing me off. But at the same time, what is this? I just need to see what is over there, you know? Yeah, okay, he's definitely just 
getting something going. No, like fish. I just don't know what, like, when when is he planning on? Okay, here he goes. Oh, it was too late there with my uh, with my pool away. Now our first Colossus is out. Don't completely mind my position. Maybe I even like it. Okay, liking it might be pushing it too far, but it doesn't feel super bad, honestly. Let's figure out where his army is. I do have a prism once again, which I'm happy with. Charge about to finish up as well. Forgot to start thermal lands. Oh. I feel like he doesn't have enough uh, medivacs, huh? Where's your medivacs at, bud? That's my real question right now. Did you see something? Oh. That was a mine burrow. Sorry. I thought that was a little more valuable. Okay. Here we go. I don't know. Maybe I can kill this. Oh, what are these random guys doing? I'm not so sure right now. Oh, now we can kill literally every single uh, SCV, which is huge. But why are they attacking themselves? It's like uh, cannibalism, but worse. Because it's my zealots. I'm not sure if that makes it work, actually. Well, probably. Because if I recall correctly, according to the lore, Protoss units are supposed to live forever, right? Like, like thousands of years. So you could say that because they have like a, a higher lifespan, eating one of these would be kind of crude. You know, you're denying more life. I think that makes some sense. So yes, attacking your own zealots is extremely crude. I guess you just go to prison longer for killing a zealot as well. Unless you're a human. Would it then be based on the amount of lives? I'm not sure how that works. I don't think so. So imagine if a, a Terran kills a zealot and you'd go to a, to a Protoss court. Now Protoss, their laws are probably based upon people, or whatever you call it, upon their species becoming tens of thousands of years old. So... Their punishments are probably also, you know, the, the, in a similar vein. So you'll have people, or you have protos. I'm not quite sure if you can call them people. You have this proto species. They'll go to jail for 10,000 years. But I imagine you steal like a candy bar. Going to jail for one year as a protos is probably not that bad. But if you steal one ca candy bar and your name is uh, Jim Rayner, it's probably pretty bad if you have to go to jail for a year just for such a minor offense. It's like 1% of your life or probably even more. I wonder if they have like certain rules on that because they have multiple species in StarCraft 2. The lore never explores that properly. You know, and what if a Protoss gets caught in like a Terran facility? So a Protoss murders a human and goes to jail for what, 15, 25 years? Is that enough? Like that is what, like a measly 0.01% or 0.1% of his entire lifespan, while a human for stealing a candy bar would go to prison for an entire percent of his lifespan. I have so many questions right now. So does Baby Marine, but his questions are probably more like, is it still possible for me to win? I think I know the answer to that question. I think it might be, well, if I keep taking fights like this, yes. If I fight someone like a normal human being. Hmm, actually, this was a really bad fight. I was so sure that I had just won the game that I just kind of moved in. I have a crap ton of gas as well. Where did this guy come from? People have been working on my roof for the past, well, what is it? Three, four weeks? Because there's a hole in my roof. But they haven't fixed the hole yet. Yesterday it rained and rain came in. So I've been wondering what they're up to, you know? Maybe just pretending to work while they're watching my YouTube videos is a possibility. And if that's the case, please fix the uh, fix the hole, my friends up there. It literally rains inside. I feel like that would be easiest thing to fix. You could just put something on top of it and then it wouldn't go in anymore. Like when I look up through the hole, 
I can see the sky. It's an actual fact. It's not very fun. It's not a very fun episode today, I'm sorry. Philosophical questions about punishment and jail time. Starting with me attacking my own zealots. That's really that really is where it all went wrong, isn't it? Okay. I'm just gonna get more disruptors. Usually if you get more disruptors, that's better than less disruptors. It's been something seeing you again. This is the beauty of zealots. They're actually quite good in tanked units, in units that are tanky. Eh, die, ghost man. Whoop, there you go. Where are these guys going to? Oh, I accidentally rallied incorrectly. That's not good. Um, I don't actually want to lose this game, do I? Need to be somewhat more careful here. Yeah, a lot of workers. More disruptors, maybe? Yeah. Don't mind if I do, don't mind if I do. Lacking some vision on this uh, this general area. We do have a lot of cannons though. Could probably get some storm. Helps me defend outside bases, you know. I hate playing against people that build tanks. There's a reason for that. It's because I think tanks are not actually viable. But it does make the game longer. So you get in this situation where I know that I'm eventually going to win the game. And my opponent probably knows that as well, because I believe most of my opponents have somewhat of a brain. Although when playing against Terran players, you can never be entirely sure. But I can't kill them because they build tanks. I really, really dislike that. Uh, he's actually moving out right now. That's a mistake. Oh, no, 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 no. Maybe I'm the one with the mistake. Ooh, no, that was actually ends up being just fine. Well, I lost a lot of disruptors there, actually. That was... That was I thought my entire army was there, but it wasn't. So that that kind of changed how I looked at things. Yeah. Warping in at that pylon would be extremely stupid and risky. That's why I consider doing it. Because these are two words that I really do like. Stupid and risky. <sighs> so. Two, two upgrades, okay. Likeable. Very likeable even. Did I block my own potential 6th base? I think I did, no? Very cool. I also blocked his potential 6th base, but he's still on 4, so it's less of an issue, perhaps. It's been something seeing you again. So good to be around. I see the... Is it, these tanks really get me. They really do get me. I'll just get this base then, I guess. This is six. He's wondering why I'm being so slow. It's because I blocked my own sixth base. Yeah, this is fine. I actually want to lose a bunch of my Archons. They're useless for me. Yeah. Can't do anything. Oh, come on, baby Marine. He's just gonna camp the entire way through. I can feel it already, and it's starting to seriously... Oh my god! It's starting to seriously piss me off. Tanks never work. Uh oh, that was good. That was a good fight for him. Well, not sure if we could consider it a good fight, but that was a fine fight. This is such a difficult map to attack up on as well. Honest to god. Is these freaking guys on the low ground. Should I actually just go into carriers from, now, from this point on? Maybe Tempest. Tempest probably would do the trick. Huh? Ugh, I really dislike playing against this type of stuff. Okay, maybe I can just move in here. Ooh, lost a little bit more than I thought I would, honest to god. She's shooting at me with... Yeah, okay, thank you. Wait, I went back there? can't recall making that uh, decision. Probably because it wasn't a decision, it happened accidentally. Okay. Build a couple more of these. Ooh, he's actually taking out some of my crap right now, which I don't like, really. I need to start becoming a little bit more careful in my trades.
We're gonna move towards the other side right now. The reason we do that is so that we allow ourselves a little bit of a little bit of space. Oh, he scouted the fact that I'm transitioning right now. Let's just go into Tempest then. I think I have enough disruptors that I can kill absolutely everything that he would ever have. There we go. So that has been taken out. This one can take out a couple of depots as well. And we're gonna go into our Tempest shenanigans at this point. Maybe we can save it. And yes, we can. Just hold position. Don't show that it didn't die. He might forget about it. That's one of my many uh, my many rules that I have in life. <sighs> okay, what do we do from here? Not so sure, actually. Maybe I just want to continue dealing some damage on the outskirts. Ooh. No, 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 no. Don't kill it, don't kill it. Oh, he actually killed it. That's relatively bad, even. He's actually pissing me off. I thought there was going to be no way for him to get back into this game, but it seems like I kind of... Honestly, this is a tricky map. I'm not going to lie. I find this a relatively tricky map. But I still believe that I should not have been capable of giving this away in such a big way. Oh, you die. Yeah. There we go. Bam. Oh. Gonna send these over here, or maybe just in the natural. We're winning. My run by is dealing big damage as well. And we only need to hit one of these freaking disruptors. He's kind of forced into an all in situation at this point. The reason for that is because I started attacking him with these Tempest. Doesn't have enough anti air. We clear that. You guys go over here. Oh, no, no. Just go shoot this. Yeah, he's in some major trouble right now, huh? Mm. Come on, keep stimming it. Keep stimming it, buddy. I took out a couple of his uh, of his medevacs, which really helped in keeping this army well fit but addicted to drugs. Oh, he wants to land something there. It's not. I'm not gonna allow it. Is there tanks here? There's not. That means we can just blink in. He's gonna try to come in here. Pop! Camping Baby Marine, unbelievable. The very opposite of his older brother. For the people that don't know, Baby Marine, of course, is uh, Rainer's uh, little brother. Rainer never camps. Rainer is an aggressive player. And Bayerine a little camper. Almost got me as well. And a couple of decent fights, but once the Tempest came out, life became too difficult. We end with what? 6-5... 6, five, six five apply. Perhaps next week we can get 6-6 uh, six, six back again. That, of course, is the goal for now. Then once we reach that, 6-7, and then 6-8, 6-9, 7 Then we win a couple of tournaments. Uh, win an entire year filled with tournaments and become the new GOAT. Serral will be no more. But until then, I'll see you next week for a new Road to Rank 1. Bye-bye.